Good evening, everyone, or good afternoon, or good morning, wherever you are. I'm Jermaine from Beat Spider, and I am very excited to bring for you today uh, a necklace, which is just very simple netting, which is something that uh, I, net, netting is actually one of my most favourite stitches. And um, for me to be able to bring you this demonstration uh, is a real privilege. And it will be a lot of fun. It's a beginner's technique, surprisingly enough. Um, and hopefully uh, you'll enjoy it and be able to make it. Now, I'm just going to see if anyone's come on. So I need to put on the glasses. I'm technically challenged, so please bear with me. Um, ah, I see Ruti is here from Israel. Hello. Uh, who else have we got? There's Carol. Ah, from Michigan. Hello. And where do I read it? Oh, and on, oh, Wayne Wiley um, is here uh, from America. Hello, Wayne. I love your pieces. You always send in fantastic photos. Um, and who else have we got? This Jackie. Hello. Oh, this is lovely. Eve. So many people. Christina. Keo. Is that Keo Denise? Or maybe that's Denise. I don't know. From Florida. Uh, and Eve as well from the USA. So hello, everyone. Now, what I'm, I'll tell you a little bit about my journey of netting. And you can see the necklace that I'm wearing. It's just a nice, simple, netted necklace. I first was really noticed netting uh, on my travels in many museums. And, of course, it's, it's a technique that's been used back in the days of Egypt. They wore amazing collars or they used to wear... Um, shrouds and clothing with netting be, and it, it, in using different beads and it's it's a, just a really lovely lovely easy stitch to do so now the necklace that I'm wearing which is what I'm going to demonstrate first is one that it's an old design that uh, a friend of mine a very good friend of mine Bernie uh, had found a necklace in in an old you know, secondhand store. And she loved it so much, and this is many, many years ago, that she bought the necklace and then she, um, you know, designed this little necklace to, um, you know, to make for herself. And, of course, we've loved it, and I've had it on my website for a long time. It's a nice beginner simple necklace. And, of course, it's, which brings me to my second point, it's almost a similar technique to the um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg collar, which is very famous at the moment. And a lot of people have been asking me how to make it. And I have actually, I'm only halfway through, I haven't finished, but I have actually started my collar. And today um, I'm going to share that with you. But if you've not done netting before, I'll, I'll sort of show you how to do this stitch on this first on this necklace first, um, simply because it's a nice, easy one and you'll be able to get your head around it if you've not done netting before. And then afterwards, you'll see that doing the more elaborate one, um, like this one, is actually just as easy and fun to do. So, uh, now, you can uh, download the pattern if you want to um, on our website, uh, beadspider.co.uk, uh, but I will be... Um, explaining it all to you as well here. But if you are the sort of person that likes uh, a printed pattern, this one's called the Constellation Necklace. It's on our website. It comes in three colours, and I think Matthew's put them on great sale if you want them. But you can also just buy the pattern inexpensively. And whether you buy a necklace set, the kit, or the pattern on its own, if you wish, the, um, the RBG pattern is included for free for you so um i suppose it's we should begin really um if you like i'll just switch down to the mat now if you do like this video please um don't forget to you know like subscribe all those things that need to be done um so that we can share this uh right here so more about this um, Ginsburg necklace later so I'll just pop it over to the side and just carefully 
and I'm going today to make this one comes in a few different colors and versions so this is the blue which I'm going to do today now the uh, pattern also comes with this little um, clasp that I designed it's a little flower clasp and uh, that comes in with the pattern and uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that today only because um, Matthew I think if you look back in earlier tutorials Matthew has actually already taught you this so it does come with the pattern if you buy a kit or if you buy the pattern but if you'd like to see the tutorial of my button that is there for you um, I think from a couple of months ago if you just go on and look at the previous videos and you can get directly link from that from um, from our website uh, so what else and of course on the site there's also this lovely color so we've got like the the magenta and the deep blue and this is like a, a rainbow color and you can see I've put them with crystals so and to make it nice and easy so now to do this one you will need some size 8 seed beads uh, some size 10 or 11 seed beads it's up to you I use I'm just a big fan of Preciosa especially for um, um, doing a netting stitch because the beads are very round they're, they're made differently to the Japanese beads they're, um, they're, they have the air blown through them uh, when they make like the long tubes and so therefore you get this lovely rounded shape from them and I really like that with netting because it just tends to sit nicely uh, I've also got four mil crystals now you can use a bicone or uh, I've got a little um, donut shape a three by four donut and I've got some of my nice deep blue spider long thread so um, let's begin and I'll just cut some crystals off this strand as well okay we're ready to go uh, and you know what I need I need to stop a bit Luckily, I've got one here, some leftover from Matthew's tutorial from yesterday. Now, I don't know if any of you saw his tutorial yesterday. Uh, he was working with the triangle beads and he made, um, you know, he was using to make the little stars and things uh, that is still available on our website it was a, a great kit and it's been very very popular that also comes in three colorways um, and that's I don't know if you can see it on the website or not but uh, that is available not yet, not yet. <laughs> I, I told you we're technically challenged here Matthew's not here and my husband Andrew and I are struggling struggling through but never mind so um, that's that one and the other one which is still um, available until Sunday is the um, Starburst bracelet which was was with all the Rivoli's and uh, that is still on sale until uh, Sunday night which is about 24 hours time from now okay oh look and here's some little earrings that I made of this I don't think Matthew got to show you the little earrings they're really cute okay right now down to business so um that's right stop a bit so I'm just going to start here need to change my glasses excuse me I have many pairs of glasses actually I haven't looked to see if anyone's um got any questions if you do have any questions please bear with me because I have to keep changing my glasses now is anyone having buffering problems is that, that okay. the audio is the audio okay now the audio is okay now apparently okay oh yes don't forget to like and share okay right now on with some other glasses I have three different pairs of glasses for depending on what I'm doing so if I've got these ones on I can't read the comments unfortunately but perhaps if Andrew can or actually the Matthew is listening I believe and he will answer any of your questions as they come up okay so the first thing I've just got a little bit of thread here and I'm just going to I've just got this crystal left over from Matthew yesterday and I'm just going to bring it down and just make a little stopper bead which you just go through it again there we go all right 
Now, oh, now we do have the instructions that I can go through. Do we have number one? Yep, yep. Which is actually yeah. on the diagram. Um, number 10, I think. No, no, number, number 10. One. No, I need number 10. That's the clasp deck. Oh. Okay, so what we do is we start with one crystal. then three size eights. Size eights. I think I need to buy the other glasses. Um, a crystal. Three more size eights. Mm -hmm. Then a crystal. I think that's it. So we've got a crystal, three size eight, a crystal, three size eight. One, two, three. Yep. Uh, that's it. One, two, three. And then we put on three little size tens. One, two, three. Now with netting, netting is really just going back and I'll show you here on the necklace itself. Yeah. There you can see there. You're just making these little diamond patterns. And if you see here, either side of these um, we've got three beads on either side here and a crystal and three beads. And along the top of this, I also have three beads. If you can come in a little closer, lovely. So you can see here, so it's all just with three beads interspersed with crystals. So it's a really easy pattern to make a nice, simple netting stitch. So that's what I'm going to do. So as you can see here, if you see I've mimicked here, I've got my crystal, I've got my three beads, my crystal, my three beads, my crystal, and then my three little beads. And I'm just going to make the little pico at the bottom. And how to do that is you literally, um, yeah, you just miss these three beads and go back through the crystal. And by doing that, You see now I've got my little pico at the end. Okay. Now, what I need to do now, which is quite easy, and have you got the other pictures up yet, Andrew? Uh, yes. Great. Just so I need number number ten and then number eleven. Okay. We have to go through it now. Two, three. You tell Keep me going. Is it? No, next one. Great. That's number one. And that's what we've done. So if you see, I've got the crystal, the three beads, the crystal, the three beads, and then I've made the little peak up. So the next thing to do is we want to mimic that so that we have the two sides to be symmetrical. So if you wouldn't mind going on to the next slide, please. Great. So you see, I'm going to pick up, I want to mimic what I have here. So if you see, I've got three, a crystal, and three. So I'm just going to pick up one, two, three of the size eights, a crystal, and then three more size eights. One, two, three. Okay. Now I'm going to take thread back through this top crystal. Obviously this is a stopper bead, so we're ignoring that. And then I'm just going to come up through the crystal. And if I do it on the mat, you'll be able to see what's going to happen here. I've got these two sides are actually the same. They've mimicked each other. Are you able to come in a little closer, Andrew? Great. So you can see I've got my two sides and they're mimicked. But now what I need to do is I need to put my next three beads to go along the top and then the other three to create this little triangle here. And that's going to give me my little bit at the top. So if you've got the next slide, Andrew, so all I have to do now is pick up three, thank you, three of the, um, um, the size eights crystal and then three more size eights and then I will take that and so it's going to go across here and down here and if you can see the picture up there I'm going to go through this crystal here so if I take it down through the crystal 
you'll see we've got what's there in the diagram. So I've already got my first little little triangle shape. And then I need to now come down here and do another pico. Now I'm going to also show you how to hold the thread so that it's easy for you. So how I like to do it is I hold it in my finger sideways so that I can put the thread over my finger and then capture it. See like that with my other finger? Then when I need, because now I need to mimic this, so I need to add in three more of the size 8 beads. One, two, three beads. And I'm just looking to see if anyone's good. Matthew's chatting away there. Um, so I've got that. And then I'm going to pick up another crystal, another crystal, and then three of my little size tens, which will become my little pico at the bottom. Now, how I do it is I just slide them down. See, I'm still holding it there in my hand, and then I can hold and capture this thread so that everything's staying in position. Because you can, with netting, it can lose your tension quite easily. However, just as equally, it's easy to be able to um, get your tension back again which I will show you. So we're going to miss these three beads which I can just slide them out of the way and then I'll take my needle through the four mil bead and then when I pull it up and I see I'm holding it in place and that keeps it firm and so then you can see I've now got my little pico it's pretty firm in place and now I'm ready to go on to the next step. Now if you look at this we need to mimic this again. So I'm picking up three beads, a crystal, three beads, and then I will go through this crystal here. Now that is going to be, that's pretty much the whole of the pattern. So you can see it's actually very easy. So I'll just go on to the next step, which is one, two, three of the size, eight, crystal, and one, two, three of the size eight. Now, all I need to do here, and you see that's mimicking that exactly. And that's the key to netting, is you always mimic up to the next step so that you get this nice symmetric look. So, and of course you can change the size of this to whatever you like, and hence that's the key to the, um, the Ginsburg collar is it's literally just changing the size and the uh, of these little diamonds that we're doing here. So I'm just going to take my needle through the crystal. There we go. And then I can just pull that up. And then you see I've got two of my nice um, diamonds. So now of course then I need to go across the top. So again you see I'm grabbing it and holding it so it doesn't move and I can keep my tension. But as I'll show you with the next bet I'll lose tension and then I'll show you how to regain it. So again it's just one, two, three um, and crystal and one, two, three. Okay, so you see it's exactly the same pattern. It's quite simple. Now here I need to go across and down. So all I need to do is to go through the size four. Now, there we go. I've lost my tension. It's very easy to get back. All you have to do is just pull up the beads, put your finger back in place and pull them up. And now I've got my tension back. So it's really simple stitch, it's really simple. So again, just holding one, two, three, a little um, crystal, and then three little C beads, one, two, and three. Again, I just hold the needle. You see I'm keeping the thread quite firmly in place. And then I can just again, move that out of the way if I need to or not. Go through the crystal, hold it in place and then just pull it up nice and easy. And then you can see I've got my little pico in place. So you can see it's a really simple pattern. So 
and that's what I love about knit, uh, netting stitch. Now doing this little necklace in um, the size 8 beads actually makes it a very quick and easy make. Um, and yet, you, and of course, using all the sparkle, you get a great result, which um, I think is really nice nowadays. And it's sort of like a modern take on a very, very old style of necklace, which is nice. Okay, so again, just up through, I'm missing here, I'm mimicking this, I'm going up through that top crystal. Now, if you can't get to it, see, look, you can just pop up with your finger and then you can get through easily. I can pull it up. And so one more time, we're just going across and down, and I'll do that again. And again, see, I'm just holding it in place. That way I'm in control more than uh, more than the beads are in control of me, really. One, two, three. Okay, so, and then again, across and down and through this crystal. So I think you've pretty much got the idea of how to make this necklace and if I just put this down on the bottom here for you to see you can see it's already coming together quite quickly and with just a nice simple design and of course you just continue on with this to make it for whatever length that you want and you do end up with quite a nice sparkly necklace that sits really fluid and really comfortably on your neck and that's the the feature of netting so uh, I'm just going to change my glasses and um, have a look to see if there's anything that I should be replying to and then we'll go on to the um, the Ginsberg uh, necklace so so everybody's coming from all over the place. Wow, it's fantastic. Uh, oh, yeah, Matthew's saying he's here for any questions. So that's great. Now, okay, so I'll just put this all away. And uh, while I'm doing that, I could just talk to you a little bit about Ruth um, Nitzberg. You know, she wasn't, whether you agreed with her or not, the, uh, the most amazing thing about her was that her whole career, which was a very long career, especially as a lawyer for a very long time, she championed equal rights for both women and men. And she actually paved the way for uh, a lot of women to, you know, I don't think a lot of younger women realise how lucky they are you know, working and getting reasonably equal pay, um, um, which, you know, for me as a young girl, even in the 70s and the 80s, life was very different to what it is now. But anyway, so... Free. I'm sorry? You get the pattern free if you, if you buy the pattern or the kit. Yes, I've already told people that. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew's helping. Thank you, dear. I shall tell you, yes. Now, the pattern that we're going to do I'll just bring in her necklace again and I'll explain it to you. So now this was, I think, one of her most favorite collars. Interestingly enough, she had many, many collars and most of them, interestingly, were given to her by fans. Um, and she had more modern ones, but I think in a lot of the photographs, I think this one was her was one of her favorite ones. Uh, and the reason that she started wearing collars was her and her other female colleague um, decided that as they were the women judges, they um, wanted to bring a little bit more femininity to the um, to the panel, which was all men. And so, and, and of course, even here in the UK, one of our famous judges, um, who's retired recently, always wore fabulous brooches. And I actually made a spider brooch to commemorate her as well. So now down to the collar. Now, as Andrew just reminded me to tell you, uh, the I'm going to show you exactly how to make this, but the um, you can download um, the little pattern if you want to. It comes for free if you download the constellation pattern. And don't forget the constellation pattern is one that I've just showed you. And it does show you also in that pattern how to make my lovely little flower clasp that I designed and uh, you know how to put the whole thing together. So as a, a little 
worksheet to go along with this pattern um, you can get the Ginsburg pattern and it's very inexpensive that's if you want but I'm going to show you everything here now so to make this collar uh, you will need now where did I put them oh here they are I knew they were somewhere okay so to start with I've got is that the right way around or is this way right is that the right way around yes okay so I'm using as I said preciosa seed beads now I've made this using all size 10 seed beads and um, the Ginsburg necklace um, didn't have any accent beads that I could see so what I've done to make it easy because it's quite easy to get lost if you don't have that like in this one here you know we use the crystals um, to accentuate where you need to go in and out um, so what I did with this one is I've actually used the little micro crystals and I don't know if you're familiar with them but uh, this is them here they um, I've just used them in plain crystal along with these um, size 10 seed beads now the ones that I've got a number 112 on my website they're actually um, the preciosa number 59205 I use these because they're a really light alabaster they're not so bright bright chalk white but of course you can use whatever you like and you can, you don't even have to do it in white I mean if you want to make this design and you like it you can make it in any color you like um, but what I did to make the accent and unfortunately I don't think here in the light you can see the accent if I bring it up close no you can't see it oh yeah just just there, there I've used a little tiny micro crystals now the nice I can see the sparkle here but unfortunately um, on the camera you can't but never mind but it just gave me um, no color to to um, you know to detract from the collar but what it did do is it gave me that all-important intersection see there's the crystals here now it gave me the important in intersection um, to show me where um, that I needed to come in and out of because otherwise especially if you're a beginner you'll get completely lost um, however if you don't have uh, the micro crystals you could just use um, another size of the same size seed bead if you want to so um, this one is just the micro crystal uh, number one so um, that's what you do now you do need it's quite bead heavy uh, in fact a lot of netting is bead heavy because I mean this I think took up quite a lot of beads but also this um, the constellation also comes with a pattern for this little necklace as well which is a chevron netting stitch which I rather like as well so um, but this one I think uh, I'm, I, I'm sort of about maybe two-thirds of the way through maybe just over half uh, I think I'll probably end up using about 50 grams of um, the size 10 seed beads you could use size 11 if you prefer and I probably will end up using you know close to three to four packets of um, the crystals which would probably equate to you know just one other packet for a, a contrast seed bead if you wanted to okay so now I'll just make myself ready here I have some that I prepared earlier so I'll just get out my crystals and hopefully um, hopefully the white will show up on the blue enough for you so that you can see it oops did you just hear that little seed beads going everywhere I'm sure you're all very familiar with that sound I know I am and I don't know about you but I actually can't uh, walk across the floor because we have wooden floorboards here um, without hearing the ping of beads flying everywhere doesn't matter how often you sweep or how often you vacuum either there's always one hanging around that wants to ping across the floor so have any of you ever placed a bead between the sections up at the top that little space bugs me you could do if you want um, you'll see um, but you would probably do that 
at the end once you finish as Therese asks um, you could do that at the end so once you've actually finished your necklace then you could just go back and firm up and you could paste another bead or a little crystal in between it's a good question and easily fixed um, we've got anything else um, um, the crystals are size. Oh, that's Matthew asking what size are the crystals. Can you use bugle beads? Debbie asks. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You just need, as I said, with as long as you've got your intersection, whatever goes on between those intersections is completely up to you. And that's what's so wonderful um, about netting. In fact, the Egyptians mainly did use bugle beads actually in their um, the shrouds that they um, made their um, funerary shrouds in which I've seen some of them in some um, in some museums and they're, they're stunning and huge pieces and they used like a bugle bead oh where um, how many of the micro crystals would you need oh Wayne hi Wayne um, well so far to make what I've done here is I've used two packets I'm suspecting because I'm um, sort of a slightly larger proportions um, I'll probably end up using three and a half to four packets or strands of micro crystals which would probably end up being um, I would think two four six eight maybe between six and eight hundred beads whereas with the the other seed beads um, I would you know well I, I think 40 to 50 grams at least of the um but it just depends on the size you know for me i i need a much longer necklace i like to make a minimum of 18 inches uh someone like um matthew scoffer and maxine would only probably you know be 16 inches if she was lucky anyway okay so now on to the pattern of this one now i've pre-threaded the beads to save you this, so if we could just give it just down to the mat, fantastic. I'll just get myself sorted here. I've got needles and thread everywhere. Okay. So I'll just bring see if you could um, come in close for me on this, please, Andrew. And um, this is Teresa. It's a two millimeter fire polish. Um, yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't use a two meter fire polish. It wouldn't be the same size. It would be a little bit larger. Um, you could possibly, um, you can get, we have smaller crystals that are, Matthew, you know what they are. I think they're, are they two by three or something? They might work. I tend to prefer a donut, although bicones work too. But yeah, two mil fine polish. There's no reason why not. Size 15, um, super teeny weeny, probably a little bit, probably a bit small. Okay, right, back to the change of the glasses. And okay, let's see how we go. Okay, so what I've done here is, uh, good. Now here is the pattern to begin um, the Ginsberg collar in the size that I've done. So I now interestingly enough, looking at the collar because I, I, I viewed some of the photographs. This is my take on it. Um, whoever I believe she was given that collar um, in Africa by um, someone in in Africa. I think um, when she was visiting there. Um, and working with um, women of colour and helping them and they gave her the necklace. I think that's the story. Um, so, uh, but hers was uh, quite, it was quite much larger in the middle, um, but I've made a simpler version so that um, you can make it up a little quicker. Um, oh yeah, oh Andrew's got it there. So you can see it there. So you can see in the centre section of it, um, so it's quite small around the neck and then the center section is quite big and then it actually goes smaller at the bottom um, but uh, the way that I've done it is a lot simpler and um, a lot easier to to do but um, and this is my take on it anyway so um, again I've got a stopper bead I've started with a crystal then I've done three um, seed beads a crystal and three more seed beads and this is the neck section 
Uh, then I've got a crystal, and then I've done four seed beads, and then we have six sections of that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then here are the two sections of three, and that gives me this smaller um, area around the neck. And then at the end, finally, now how I've done my pico, now you can do it however you like. You could just use three seed beads. But, of course, we end with a crystal. And then I've put a crystal, uh, sorry, a seed bead, a crystal, and then a seed bead. So that, that my pico at the bottom just has a little glint of crystal at the bottom. So, again, it's exactly the same way that we did the smaller version. So we miss... The last three beads and we go through the crystal and I'll do this on the mat if that's easier for you to see and I found by putting the little crystal at the bottom you do need to just maneuver it a little bit so that it sits um, nicely what's Colleen up to once done, could you thread a bead wire through the top? Yeah, you could. You could. It might make it not quite so fluid, but yeah, it's a good idea actually. It would give it a firmness um, if you wanted to. But I think personally, just going through again um, with your thread, and even as um, I think Therese suggested, putting another little bead in between, uh, just going through that once or twice would give you the firmness and the support that you need. Um, you'd have to use a very thin wire, maybe, um, a, you know, point two or something, um, which I think would be, um, is it 28 gauge in America? Or have I gone the wrong way? Yeah, it would be about 28 gauge, I think. Okay, so, and which is, uh, yeah, point two here in the UK. So then now we've got two between our crystals. Have I made a mistake there? I think I have, you know, in my running up. Let me just look at that. Yep, I missed a crystal. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, we'll pretend there's a crystal there, shall we? <laughs> so, oh, no, hang on, there is. Oh, I'm as blind as a bat. <laughs> I better pick it up a bit closer. Yeah, there is a crystal there. I oh, know there's not. Okay, all right. So what we're going to do is we miss this crystal. No, I did miss a crystal there. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Yes, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I've missed a crystal. Hang on just a second. Then in that case, what I'll do is I'll go over to the one I've been working on. Um, okay, here we go. So I'm at the same point here. Sorry about that. Okay, so I've done my little pico, and then we've got our four beads, our crystal, and our four beads. So it's exactly the same. So all you do is you pick up here four beads, one, two, three, four. And then one of the micro crystals, and then four more beads, one, two, three, four. And that, again, is making my section here. Now when we get to the top, it's different because we have three beads and you need to be aware of that. So I'll I'll continue beading across here and when we get to the other end I'll explain that. In fact, hang on a second. Yes, I have many glasses. I'm a woman of many pairs of glasses. Okay. So again I just hold it down and hold it in place with my finger and then now I'm going to there's my four here and then my four and then my crystal so I'm just going to take it through this crystal here and by holding it in my finger yeah now I've got it in position then I just move it up and again I'll just bring in some beads one two three four a little crystal. One, two, three, four. Right. And then again, um, I, I, here's my four and my four, which I'm made a mistake. And now look, this is great. This it, is interesting. See, I've added in an extra bead there. I've got one, two, three, four, five. But do you know what? 
Um, if you do it once or twice, it doesn't really matter. Nobody will really notice. I didn't tell you that. But, I mean, if you wanted to, you could pull it all out. But um, for me, um, if, if, you, if you make a mistake of one bead here and there, it, you actually can't see it. That's what's great and forgiving about this, um, about netting. Because if you're a numpty like me and you get the numbers wrong all the time, you can actually get away with it. Right, so I'll just carry on here. Two, three, four. See, this is what happens when you watch TV when you're beating and you're supposed to be counting. You um, you make mistakes. But there you have it. Matthew says that uh, it wouldn't be um, actually, you know, for my legacy. If if it's an absolutely perfect piece of um jewelry, it wouldn't be mine because I always make mistakes. <laughs> Okay, so we'll go through the little crystal. Get through there. There we go. And now finally we've come to the end. And now you can see, now see these ones here, I've got all the sets of four, the supposed sets of four. And then now what I've got is I've got two sets of three. And now... Um, so then, of course, because we're mimicking the same as this, I only need to pick up three beads of crystal and then three more beads. One, two, three. And then, of course, I go through this end crystal here. And that will mimic what's here at the top. Okay, so that's the easy bit. Then now I have to come across and down. So again, that is picking up three and three. So we pick up one, two, three, a little crystal, and one, two, three. Um, I'm hoping you can all um, see the beads on this colour mat. I like these um, beads there. If I hold it up a bit closer, I don't know if you can see. They're like an alabaster. They're um they're not quite as opaque. They're sort of um sort of just sort of semi-opaque and they've got a nice sheen to them. And I like it because it's not such a stark white necklace, it's a bit more subtle. Okay, so now you can see I've done it again. If you need to pull up your tension, just hold that there. Now you can see that I've got my my three at the top and three at the side but now the next step that I need to mimic and this is an important step is you've got three beads a crystal and then four beads so we need to mimic that the same so again I need to pick, and this is where you can really change around your beads or change around your design by changing the beads but you just need to mimic what's on the other side so that it looks good. So now I need to pick up four. One, two, three, four. Right, so you can see there I've got, oh, look at that, one, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, so we need to pick up three. One, two, three, told you I couldn't count. Then the crystal, and then four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it's always it always pays to check, you know, just before you um, actually commit yourself. So you see, I've got three and then four. So that means there's my three, my crystal, and then my four. So that when I take this down through the next crystal, I can just pop it up if I can't get to it. When I take it through the little crystal. Did I get through there? Yeah, I did. Okay, and you can see now that that has matched that perfectly. So now I can then just carry on, and again I'm back to four and four. So, so it's actually a nice easy piece to do, and it's it's a fun piece to do, um, and it's very relaxing. I've, as I said, I've just been I only started this. Um, Yesterday evening I did, uh, you know, about an hour or so in the evening and then I just did a couple of hours this morning and it hasn't actually taken too long at all and I'm sort of, you know, two-thirds of the way there, which I'm quite pleased about actually. 
Je vais le faire là. Oops. I hope you don't see me. You are just seeing the top of my head. I do apologize. Okay. So you can see again, I'm mimicking just for a crystal and four. Then when I come down to this end, it's four beads, one, two, three, four. And then I've got my little picker. So I just pick up my one, two, three, four beads and a crystal. And then I pick up the seed bead, a crystal. Oh, come on, get on there. And one more seed bead. And then again, I just bring it down to the end, hold it in place with my finger. I can move that out of the way if I need to. And then I can just pop back through the crystal. And as I said, again, this little pico, putting a crystal at the bottom, it doesn't always, there you go, that sits fine. Uh, if you need to firm it up, you can just pull the crystal and then pull it up a little bit. And then again, I'm ready to continue on. So it's a nice, easy pattern and a nice one to do. And of course, the result is is lovely. I'm um, just looking to see if anybody said, I did a couple back in the 70s, Sharon says. Yes, I know. It's a great old design. I mean, it's been around for a long, long time. Um, and it, it hasn't really... Um, it just, you know, it comes and goes and you can just change the beads and, um, you know, change it to what you like. And, and I think it's just a, um, a great design, really. Okay. So then again, we've got these four and these four. And we go through this crystal here. And then if you can't get to it, just pick it up with your finger and pop it through. Yeah, like that. Okay, so there's not really much more to tell you with this tutorial um, because as you can see, it's nice and easy to do. It's um, not one that's it's a bit taxing. It's just just nice and fun. But I think the results are lovely. I'll just do a little bit more and then we'll, we'll see if there's any questions that need need answering. There's a crystal. Get in there. Now I'll just take you through this top bit one more time and then um and I think that's probably enough. So again, we're up to here now where we've got the three beads. So we just pick up one, two, three, and a crystal, and one, two, three. Okay, so then again, go through the top, go through the top crystal. And then now to go at the top again, we need to go across and down so again it's three one two three and a crystal and one two three and then we go through because we're going across to make this triangle you pop through this first crystal oh, now see if you lose your tension don't worry just pull it up hold it and pull it through and then finally, and this is the tricky one that you always have to remember, so when you're watching TV, you actually have to stop and think about it, is you do the three and the four. So we just go one, two, three. That's why I said the original necklace, if you look at it very closely, um, I think it started with three beads at the top, and then it had up to five beads in the middle. I'm going to just get some crystals here. Um, it had five beads in the middle and then it went back to four and to three. And I thought that was um, 
you know, quite, uh, you really had to stop and think about that one. And I don't think it actually made any difference to the pattern. So again, I've got three, a crystal, then four, and then I just pop through here. And then that gives me, that matches. So you can see now that when you look at this, that each of my little sides match or supposed to match. And the one that I think I made a mistake on, which I can't even see now, um, around here somewhere has gone. So it's uh, not a problem. <laughs> so it's very forgiving. So, but the collar comes along very quickly and is very lovely. It's a shame that the, um, the camera doesn't pick up the, um, the lovely crystals. So pretty much that's basically um, all you need to know to make uh, this necklace. It's just a nice, simple netted stitch and very easy. Um, and Linda says it's so pretty and I've made it look easy. Thank you. <laughs> um, apart from my mistakes. Oh, do you know what I forgot? You know how Matthew always has a cup of tea? I didn't tell you. I like sherry. That's better. It's evening here. It's my pre-dinner drink. Um, what else has someone got to say? Wayne's got a question. Um, Wayne's got a question. Where's that? What's the width? What's the width of? RGB. RBG. Oh, what's the width of this from here to here? Um, the one that I've done looks at about maybe two inches. Does that look like two inches to you? Mm. I would think, yeah, maybe two, two and a quarter inches. But, I mean, you can make it much longer if you want to. But, I mean, look, if I hold this up, um, hang on, I'll just get the crystals away from the thread. If I hold this up on my neck uh, here, that, that gives you a look. A look um, makes me look older. Hang on, get it right. <laughs> there we go. So it looks like a proper collar. It's nice. Yeah, so I, I think I think Wayne, that's a couple of inches, I would think. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, nice to see you. I'd love to see you in person, Wayne. Um, Wayne Wiley um, sends in some fantastic photographs, and he's um, he's very keen and avid beater, and um, um, I, I always love to see the work that you do. Uh, let me see. And I think I think from memory you said you were in the services, weren't you? So. Um, uh, uh, and yeah, from Texas in the services. No, it was in the services. Um, do, 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 do. Any other? No, I think that's it. Oh, someone's Dorothy Clark saying she's watching on my phone. I didn't want to leave the demo to look. <laughs> okay, so um, that's pretty much it so i hope you remember to like and su subscribe because um and 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 i hope you like my tutorial because i will do some others uh i'm, I'm probably more of an evening sort of gal so i'd probably do um you know saturday evenings or some evenings and oh andrew's sitting beside me having a whiskey matthew can keep his tea <laughs> mm. so um I don't know if anyone's got any questions or if there's anything else that they'd like to see, but hopefully I'll do more in the future as well. And I hope you like um, these uh, necklace tutorials. Don't forget, if you would like a written pattern, you just um, go onto our website, beinspired.co.uk, and you can... Um, um, you know, you can download the pattern. It's with the constellation. It comes free with a constellation pattern, um, or it also comes free if you purchase any of the constellation kits. If you um, want us to have all the, we've organised all the colourways for you and done all the work. Um, also, just as a little recap, I don't have any photos today because, as I said, um, we're a bit technologically challenged without Matthew here. But um, um, but don't forget the uh, the beautiful um, starburst bracelet is still on sale until tomorrow night, which will be like in twenty four hours time. Um, 
She Baby Johnson says thank you. She truly enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> um, and also to the fabulous triangle, um, the tempting triangles that Matthew worked on yesterday, of course, are all available. Um, with the Starburst, some colours are out of stock. And I'm just trying to find that also comes with uh, Matthew's... What do you call this, the Stegosaurus? No. Um... Some dinosaur. You know how Matthew's got to think about dinosaurs, like he's got a dinosaur on his mug, and this is his little Stegosaurus bracelet. Was it Stegosaurus? Uh, what was it called? I don't know all the dinosaurs he does. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is a free uh, download, little pattern that you get if you do uh, purchase any of the Tempting Triangle kits or the books. Uh, it makes up to 15 uh, different... Um, pieces and it comes with uh, in three different colors so that's still all on there and all great but uh, I guess uh, that's pretty much all from me um, please please like and share if you can especially I think for this this lovely um, Ruth um, Bader Ginsburg necklace it's a nice tribute to her I think and uh, I know a lot of people wanted to know how to make it and it is quite easy and a lot of fun to do um, so I guess that's all for me and um, thank you very very much and I hope Matthew's been answering um, all your questions because uh, if I don't have my classes on I can't read the, the questions and answers but um, anyway thank you very much for watching and um, hopefully I'll see you again very soon bye for now thank you <laughs>